Rachel and welcome to my channel. My channel is a little bit of books, a little bit of Disney, a little bit of parenting and a few other bits and bobs as well. Today is book day! Okay, so today I am going to talk about the new Robert Galbraith aka JK Rowling's new book um, in the Comron Strike series called Lethal White. Um, this is the fourth one in the series. Uh, the first one was The Cuckoo's Calling which was so good, like one of my favorite books. I've referenced it in other book vlogs I've done. I really, really, really enjoyed that one. I love crime novels and that one was so good. Um, the second one, um... okay, so the second one is called The Silkworm. Um, that one I really enjoyed as well. Um, especially the ending the sort of reveal on that one on who did it was really good and um i also like it was about an author and so i kind of liked all the sort of inner workings of the publishing industry and stuff like that i thought that was really interesting being a little bit of a bookworm that i am i thought that was good the third one career of evil i did not like as much um i found it really confusing um, there was just a lot, a lot of suspects, a lot of plot, um, and I got, I just, I found it uh, just a lot. However, when I went back and read it the second time, I enjoyed it a lot more, um, because I kind of knew where it was going, and so when I could sort of focus on where I knew it was going, um, I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, so now I'm up to the fourth one. So, um, for anyone who doesn't really know what the it's about, I mean, you definitely want to start with the first one because it lays all the groundwork, but it is about a detective agency that is run by Cormoran Strike, who is a former um, soldier. Oh, it's, it's set in Britain. He's a former soldier. He had his leg um, blown off, basically, as they put it um, in the book, um, in Afghanistan. Um, and so he comes back from the army um, and he opens a detective agency because he used to kind of work as a detective within his role within the army. Um, and on the, in the very first sort of bit of the very first book in The Cuckoo's Calling, you meet Robin, who is a temp worker, um, who gets sent to his office to be a secretary basically for, I think it's about a week. And basically she ends up by staying. She loves the work and ends up by staying. Um, so yeah, so I'm not gonna go too much into the details of the other books, just read them, they're good. Um, I'm just gonna, I may end up by covering it all at some point, um, but this one, because this one is new out, I just wanted to try and sort of skip ahead to this one. I'll also let you know, um, I'm also putting in the title and everything, that there will be spoilers. So, um, to all the books, including this one, so yeah, if you haven't read the books, don't watch this video because, as I have mentioned as well, they are a crime series. If you find out who did it, then there's no point to reading the books. So, yeah, so spoilers. Okay, so let's start. So I've kind of divided um, it into some topics um, to try and make it a bit more concise with what I'm thinking. Um, so I thought we would start off, I would start off with the characters. I think it's probably a good place to start. So we'll start off with Robin first. Um, so at the end of the, it literally picks up from the very end of the, the last book, Career of Evil, um, where it it's her wedding, she's marrying Matthew, um, and Cormoran walks in, knocks over a vase of flowers, and she smiles at him, and Matthew gets super jealous. Um, so, um, it literally picks up straight from there, they just go straight onto the reception. Um, it's kind of, a lot of this book is spent just miscommunication between Robin and Cormoran, which can be a little bit frustrating at times, um, but, he doesn't, she had been fired previously to the wedding, he hires her back and she actually ends up by becoming a partner. Um, is basically the gist of that. And then, um, I find out some other thing, Matthew's been deleting Cormoran's uh, voicemails or messages or something because he is a jerk. 
Um, so yeah, she kind of goes into this marriage unhappy. She's unhappy on her wedding day and then it skips to a year later where she's still married to Matthew and still unhappy. Um, she's now a partner in the firm, which is good. They've hired two extra people as well. Um, but her and that sort of camaraderie between her and Strike is not really there um, for the majority of this book. Um, so yeah, it does feel, it feel, it has a different feel to the other books. Um, there's a lot of them on their own solo and this story basically is how they kind of come back to working together because they are definitely much better as a team than they are on their own. Um, Robin is also dealing with some of the um, after effects of the previous book where she got um, abducted so she's kind of working through some mental health issues because she's quite she's quite jumpy and she gets anxiety attacks which is completely understandable but again something she doesn't want to explain to Cormoran because she thinks that makes her look weak that's a lot of the theme for Robin um, with this book is her feeling like feeling weak and not wanting to be perceived as weak um, which can get a little bit angsty at times um, she has to go through it she has to work through it um, but um, I, I don't know if I, I like the end result. The end result is she kicks Matthew to the curb, which is good. Um, but because he cheated on her, I think I just would have preferred it more if she kicked him to the curb because she genuinely, she knows the whole way through, she's saying the entire way through the book that she does not love this man. So I just, I kind of wish that she had had the guts basically to dump him and then if he, she found out that he was cheating which is why she ultimately ends up by dumping him in the book then it's kind of a just a confirmation that that had been the right decision to make as opposed to her finding out that he was cheating and then her dumping him it's only a subtle difference but it's but there is a difference there in the way it would have made her appear stronger um so i wish it had gone that way but uh, to be honest by, it, by the time it reaches that point, I am just so glad to see the end of Matthew. Um, I know he will probably still keep coming in and out of the other books, but at least I'm just so happy for the end of that marriage. <laughs> like, I am done. All right, so let's move on to Cormoran. So um, he is basically the same as he has been in the other four books. Um, he is, he's kind of got a bit of a Sherlock Holmes kind of reputation, but he is still living above the, um, above his detective office um he's dating a woman called Lorelai but he doesn't really love her and he just wants it to be like just all cash except for the fact that they've been together I think in like 10 months or something so unsurprisingly she wants more and then just because Charlotte comes back into it Charlotte the ex the annoying hideous Charlotte um, just comes in to just stir trouble because of course she does um, and again he's sort of torn between where Robin's storyline personal storyline is literally torn between half the time thinking about Matthew and the other half thinking about Cormoran he is spent thinking about Lorelai and Robin and then a bit of Charlotte as well um, it does feel very teen angsty but again, it's all feelings he had to work through, so I'm just glad he's worked through them now, so hopefully they don't come up in any more books. Um, so yeah, so that's them. The, then you have uh, the rest of the cast. Um, Ezra, there's some good, uh, funny characters that have just come in literally just for this book, um, the Chiswell family, which is the family that um, hires Cormoran. Um, because they're being blackmailed. Um, the father of that family is a politician um, and I think he's probably a little bit loosely based on uh, good old Boris Johnson um, and he's got this hilarious or their incredibly posh conservative family um, and they all have like you know these ridiculous rich people um, posh nicknames 
um, like fizzy and uh, flopsy and things like that, and that's just quite hilarious, really. Um, so yeah, it's, they they make they they make good characters. Um, so yeah, let's talk about what the actual plot is. So the plot is um, it's weird. There's kind of like two two running plots. This is what can make it a little bit confusing. Um, which is the first bit starts with a boy named Billy, I say boy, like young man named Billy, who comes to um, the office wanting to talk to Cormoran because um, he says he needs to know, he's clearly, he's disheveled, he's clearly has some mental health issues, um, he's got a particular tick, um, and he comes to Cormoran, basically he's fixated on him because he has been in the press for um, the previous crimes that he solved, basically saying, I saw somebody die when I was little. I saw somebody be killed and I saw them be buried. Um, it was a girl, but they said it was a boy. Um, and he basically just wants to know what happened and nobody will tell him what happened. Um, so he talks to Cormoran, but then ends up by getting scared and leaving. So then Cormoran um, he just can't let it go as much as he kind of part of him is kind of like oh This could just be sort of some crazy wild goose chase the other part being like He just can't let it go. So he goes to investigate try and find out about um, this person and ends up by crossing paths with the Chiswells um, One minute I just spoke Chiswell. I'm just bear with me one second because I've totally forgotten what the main Okay, so um, he crosses paths so with Jasper Chiswell, um, who, uh, like I said, is this uh, senior politician um, for the Tory party, um, and he's basically being blackmailed by the Knight family, who turns out to be um, Billy, his older brother is basically blackmailing um, him and Billy, uh, no, sorry, um, Jimmy is kind of like a far left kind of political kind of activist, but in a bit of a kind of crazy way. Um, and yeah, he's trying to just bring down this very rich family basically. Um, and then from there, everything gets quite complicated. It turns out there's a lot of, um, like any good fancy family, there's a lot of skeletons in the closet. Um, and basically they're trying to work out this blackmail and what's going on with it. There's lots of secrets. People won't say what's going on. Like they won't say what the blackmail is about, but what they want is to get Dirt. What they want Cormoran to do is dig up dirt on the Knight family. Um, and the other, there's another politician who gets involved as well. Um, the Gwen, Gwen, one second, I'm just going to get Pete to check the names of them. It's like the last name is Gwen? Gwen? Uh, got a Garrett Wynn. Yep, that's it. Garrett Wynn. Um, to. Um, his wife is a politician, Della, um, and they are sort of part of this blackmail, though she isn't, but he is. It basically gets very messy and Robin has to go undercover um, uh, 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 in like the Houses of Parliament to basically try and work out what's going on. Um, there is a lot of, lots of characters and a lot of different threads, um, so just take it slowly <laughs> is my recommendation because you do have to try and remember where they all crop up. Um, I'm not actually going to tell you the end because this is the thing with this and this is kind of the bit that I'm a bit sad about is the fact that they were no basically this is the book think of it this way about this much of the book it feels like is spent dealing with Cormoran and Robin's angst and 
then this bit is dealt with the actual plot of the crime and then it feels like these last little pages at the end is what actually room left in the book to deal with the to deal with the actual reveal of the crime which anybody who reads crime fiction um, knows or watches crime fiction watches NCIS, CSI, any of those shows that's the bit you're waiting for you're waiting for the it all to make sense you're waiting for the Sherlock Holmesy type character to say this is what happened and unfortunately in this book because there was so much angst to be dealt with at the beginning and throughout it just feels like there was not enough room for the plot to breathe and there just wasn't enough room for the ending for it to be really satisfying it just felt incredibly rushed and crammed in and it just wasn't as satisfying as the endings have been in previous books especially the first two Robert Galbraith's books where those endings they managed she managed in the first two to make a really good balance between character development and the plot and making sure there's room for the for the big reveal um, this one the balance was just off the balance was off in the previous one as well um, but like I said on the second read and maybe it will be the same on a second read because I'll know sort of which bits to filter out um, it will seem better but on a first read it just wasn't as satisfying as what I had hoped it was going to be so yeah so now I'm just gonna I'm gonna rate it out of five um, what I would rate it out of five so the first one Cuckoo's Calling I would say I would definitely rate it five out of five um, I really really enjoyed that one um, the second one I would say probably uh, four and a half wasn't quite as good as the Cuckoo's Calling but it's still incredibly good and especially that end bit was really good um, Career of Evil was probably three, uh, three, three and a half, probably on the second read. And I would say that Lethal White, again, is a three. Just not enough room in the end to get it all out, to get everything so that it feels satisfying, basically. There's just too much too much information too quickly in contrast to the beginning of the book which felt like not enough information and there's also one sort of little minor thing that does make it quite can make it quite difficult to read um, which is she often talks about especially Cormoran being tired and that's sort of my overall impression of Cormoran is tired and in pain and when you're constantly reading about a character that is tired and in pain and then they're also sort of racked with all this angst it just makes for a bit of an exhausting read um, and you just kind of want to be like hurry up get to the good bits <laughs> um, but now that that whole situation with Matthew and everything is kind of dealt with I'm now hoping that we can move forward and the next book um, will be hopefully back to what more close to what the first two books were, which was a, a better balance between character development and the actual plot and storyline and everything like that as well, and the actual crime. Because this is the thing, J.K. Rowling writes great crimes. Like the crimes are always, always, always really good and really interesting. Um, so there just needs to be room to really explore those because they are worth exploring because they are very good um so yeah so that's uh sort of my thoughts on the book um if anybody else has read it please let me know in the comments what you thought um or on any of the other books as well any of the other robert galbraiths um yeah let me know if you had the same issues with me if you thought it was too angsty or whatever or what you thought of the actual crime because i did actually think the crime was quite good um or crimes multiple um there's many crimes <laughs> um but yeah let me know what you think um in the comments below i so really look forward to finding out but um that's all for today so thank you i'll see you in the next video bye